Hey everybody, Multiclassic Gamer here. Welcome to a new Let's Play. And what game is it? Well, let's find out. We know it's on the Wii, but what is it? Well, let's insert in the, the disc and find out, shall we? It's spinning. Actually, I don't, know, I don't know if it actually spins inside the Wii. I don't think it actually does, so this is a very misleading uh, image we're seeing right now. And... Wait, it's normally that's... Oh, okay, there we go. <gasps> What's this? That's right, folks. Welcome to Let's Play Metroid Prime Trilogy. Yes, Metroid Prime Trilogy. We are going to be LPing all three Metroid Prime games. The main ones, that is, obviously. Um, yeah, so yeah, three Let's Plays for the price of one. Um, for those of you who don't know, let's get the context out of the way here. I actually did blind LPs of all three of these games in the past decade. Um, it started with the original Metroid Prime back in... Uh, to June 2012, and it was the very first Metroid game I ever played, like I ever experienced. So naturally, there are a lot of cringe-inducing moments, in the, especially early on in the Let's Play. And not only that, but the LP went through like two major hiatuses. There was the first one um, after like a eight or nine episodes in, and so I stopped playing the game for a year, and then came back in 2013. And I recorded like 30, like did like 30 more episodes or so, and then I got, and then I went on another hiatus, episode 41 or two or whatever, and then I finished the game in 2015. The same year, I started Metroid Prime 2 Blinds, and that LP did not go through any hiatuses. It's, and I, and I finished in December of that year, so within the same year, actually, I finished Prime 2, yeah. And then I, and then, uh, winter 2016, 2017, I did Metroid Prime 3. Um, so now, I'm going back and revisiting all three games with the knowledge that I've accumulated over a dozen playthroughs of each game. Seriously, like, I've played these games at least a dozen times, um, since those blind LPs, and because, and the main reason why, I'm just gonna use a generic Wii, me, uh, this is not my original Wii U, it's the, it's the second Wii U I bought, uh, like a few months back. <laughs> Yeah, I have two Wii U's. I know, it's, it's, it's weird. See, I know some people are probably not happy about me doing another revisit. I mean, even though it's like three for a price of one, but still. Um, I, I just wanted to do this because I wanted to, you know, just kind of share the experiences I've gained with all these games over the years. Um, um, I guess I can go over, like, how I played through these games dozens of times, but uh, basically it comes down to playing them once a year, but also other things, too. So, we're going to start with the first game, Metroid Prime. And I'm going to be playing all three of these games on Veteran Mode. Normal Mode is technically Easy Mode. When you play through the games once, you unlock a, a Hard Mode called Hyper Mode. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not that level of good at, the, at these games, but... You know, I'm confident in my ability to at least play through them... Uh, you know, uh, competently on Veteran Mode. Which is the same as Normal Mode on the first two Prime games. So... This uh, collection was actually technically part of the uh, New Play Control line of games on the Wii that came out in 2009. Here we go. Uh, vessel directly above Town 4. I guess I'll, I won't talk too much during the cutscenes, but like I, I think I watched them without talking in the original LP. But still, this is the trilogy version, so it's in widescreen, so it just it looks better. So. We'll go over the differences with the trilogy versions of the first two games as we go along. Prime 3 is pretty much, it's almost entirely unchanged here, though. So that won't be much different in terms of quality of the game itself. But looking back on it, this cutscene just looked fantastic on the GameCube. In fact, this game in general, and Prime 2 looked amazing on the GameCube. I don't know if I went over that much in the blind LPs, but I cannot praise the visuals of these games enough. They're just outstanding. There she is! 
I like her look better in this game than the other two games. Her appearance actually kind of changes just a little bit in the second and third game, but I think she looks her best in this game. At least her suit does. I mean, Samus uh, herself is obviously... Well, I mean, like, obviously they 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 improved the models in the second and third game, too, with the, the human models, but... Yeah, I'm talking more about the suit itself, because that's amazingly what you see in this game. Okay, so here we are. We now have uh, pointer controls instead of the uh, weird uh, controls, you know, dual analog controls we had in uh, Prime in Prime 1 and 2 in the original on the GameCube. Um, now, as for scanning, uh, I can't make any promises for 100% scanning, but I will scan at least the... I'll try to go for the stuff that you can only scan, you only get one chance to scan. So yeah, uh, oh yeah, that's right, well you do have to scan this, obviously. In order to activate these uh, targets here to open the next force field here. Uh, so basically Samus uh, is answering a distress call at this, uh, at this uh, vessel, it's called the Forget Orphean, or Orphean Forget, however you say that. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna check it out and see what's, see what's up. I mean, it's a space pirate frigate, so... Maybe she's trying to answer the call of someone who was uh, trapped by the space pirates or something. Okay, so yeah, it, the tutorials are pretty obvious, but one thing that's interesting here is that when you scan the doors, it tells you what the door leads to, when normally when you scan a door, it tells you, well, in Prime 1, normal doors like these cannot be scanned normally, but the difference, there's a difference here because they are, um, here in the frigate Orphean, it tells you, like, where, you know, where the door leads to, essentially. Like, entrance to Deck Alpha Access Hall. But if you look at the map by pressing 1, you can actually see that it... Oh. Well, actually, yeah, yeah it, uh, it tells you on the map what the name of the rooms are anyway, so these, these uh, descriptions are kind of pointless. But, uh, yeah, pretty much any creatures, any, uh... Any pickups and whatnot, they can be scanned and they're added to the logbook. Uh, for instance, we got these ones right here. These are parasites, I believe they're called. Yep. Interstellar vermin, travel in swarms. Indigenous to Town 4, single parasite is harmless to larger life forms. However, they tend to travel in large groups, swarming over potential prey. Such forms can be dangerous. So yeah, just stuff like that. I'm not going to read all the scans because that can really slow down the pacing and I don't want to do that too much. I want to bore people too much. Uh, but I'll, re I'll scan every now and then, take a look at stuff. It's caused by severe severing the spinal cord. But simple, at some point, though, I've read all of these scans, though. Like, I've, you know, in some of the playthroughs I did of these games in the past, I've, I've been pretty thorough. Here we got Space Pirate. Oh, actually, it doesn't give you, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, this is not the first time, we'll, or not the last time we'll encounter Space Pirates, but it's a Metro game, so it's to be expected. So, uh, but yeah, this time they don't get the scan. Uh, this is not... Yeah, most scan, most stuff you can scan will not go into your logbook. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I say that as I'm scanning stuff that doesn't go in the logbook, but whatever. Uh, here we can just throw rubble here with the charge beam. So yeah, just hold the A button and the same as will charge, but uh, you can charge the beam. But at the same time, sometimes it's a lot more fun to just do the P shooter where you just tap an A button. Like pew, 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 as I call it. Okay, so if we go through this uh, crawl space here with the, you know, morph ball mode by pressing the C button on the nunchuck. We can find ourselves our first map. Uh, so yeah, this is a research entry. Typically applies to like save stations, map stations, you know, stuff that you can uh, interface with, and they'll give you special cool stuff like a map, for instance. So this will get us the map of the vessel, and will lead us to where we need to get. Or, well, not really lead us per se, but uh, well. Speaking of which, you know, what? I'm going to deactivate the uh, uh, hint system. I am not going to need that. There is a hint system that kicks in every now and then. It'll tell you directly where to go. This is where we're headed. This is our first destination. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and deactivate the... Uh, there we go. I believe it's in uh, options or something. Oops. Oh, it's actually plus, isn't it? No, no, that's not it. That's it's, It is two, but... Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, you, you, so you press the 1 to pause, and you can press plus and minus to uh, cycle through different parts of the menu. Uh, so we want to, uh, we want a quick game, okay? So see you guys later, bye. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we want to go to display it, I believe? Yep, there it is. So I'm going to switch it off. There we go. Alright. 
So, uh, yeah, when I... After completing the LP of this game, well, actually, as I was LPing this game, this quickly became one of my favorite games on the GameCube. Um, it was actually surpassed by the second game after I played through it, so yeah, I loved Metroid Prime 2 more than Prime 1, but that's not to throw any shade at this game, because this game is fantastic. I loved all three games in this collection, but, uh, yeah, Prime... Which one is my favorite? It's kind of a toss between Prime 2 and 3. I can almost guarantee you, though, at some point I'm going to miss a scan that's uh, one time. I'm, I, I can guarantee it. But again, it's not a big deal. I'm not going for all scans. Uh, I don't think I did that for the blind up piece because obviously I didn't know that was a... Obviously I didn't know about the one-time scans. Uh, I probably could have... Oh, I could have I could have scanned those uh, energy pickups. Um, oh, isn't there like a... Okay. So sometimes... It's okay, so up here we have a, a turret. It's a missile turret. It will fire at you, and they can usually do a lot of damage, but not this first one, uh, but basically you just want to, that's what I like to do, is just kind of, um, maneuver, like, around walls to avoid getting hit by them. Um, uh, but usually, whenever you're about to encounter missile turrets, like in here, you can usually find something to scan around that will deactivate the turrets, like this. There we go. So turn green, and now they're no longer defense mode, they're not attacking you. But you can destroy them if you want to, you get pickups anyways. Uh, oh, dang, there's no pickups. The pickups in this game are scannable for the logbook, so keep that in mind. Uh, but not in Prime 2, interestingly enough. I don't think they are in Prime 2 either. Oh wait, you know what? I need to go back, because there's actually going to be... Uh, examples of uh, one-time scans, and that would be... Uh, research entries... Uh, so mainly for that, you're looking for red, uh, red symbols to scan. Like right here. Whenever you see these, these are very important. They're either going to go in the logbook, or they're going to trigger something that will allow you to progress forward. Uh, so here we have pirate data. Uh, log 0.09.992.3. Zebs has fallen. All ground personnel are presumed dead. Either killed by the hunter clan at Plyden Mill, or in the subsequent description in underground facilities are research frigates, Orphean, Suriacus, and Vol Paragon hat were in orbit at zero hour managed to retreat. Figure Orphean is now docked at Vortex Outpost. Orphean's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. Metroids are healthy, but unrestricted feeding schedules due to uncertain su supply status. We are Ready to begin research on Metroids and other promising life forms. Security status remains at Code Blue. No signs of the pursuit from the hunter. Uh, yeah, about that I'm here. <laughs> okay, but I think that's it for the pirate data here. Uh, you can scan all the other stuff you want to. It's just kind of random stuff there. Uh, the pirates here are very weak, so they go down just one charge beam. Oh, I just missed the energy pickup there. Uh, so basically, energy pickups are these uh, little spheres that come that appear whenever they're dropped by enemies sometimes, and they heal you. Um, energy is this game's form of health. Smaller engineers places these purple ones replenish 10 units of energy. So, going to the cringy moments from the first LP, one of them was that I referred to these as uh, purple coins, these uh, round purple energy spheres. I did that as a silly thing, because that's what I was familiar with at the time. Mario Galaxy, I loved Mario Galaxy so much, and when I saw purple spheres, like, oh, purple coins. So I made that purple coin counter, and didn't even bother to stick to it. So that was kind of, it was very pointless, but... I think I remember seeing at least a comment or two of people making fun of me for that. It's like, whatever. People are going to make fun of you for whatever. Oh, I should probably scan this too. Yeah, I can see it happening, like, even in LPs like this where I'm experiencing the game. Okay, subject... Okay, oh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, most, uh, most enemies and, oh, we got another pickup right here. Uh, yeah, most enemies and, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, most enemies will not go down with just a single charge shot later on in the game, but this, obviously, this being basically the tutorial level, it's gonna be, uh, they're gonna be easy on us. Uh, missile ammunition, resupplies, missile launcher with three rounds of ammo, so... Yeah, we have our missile launcher. Uh, you can I actually haven't used it yet. I can't believe I haven't used it yet. But yeah, we do have missiles we can fire um, with the uh, uh, down on the control pad on the Wii remotes. So I'll should probably demonstrate one here in a second. I will do that. Actually, I'll have a really good opportunity to do it here real soon. So yeah, we'll stick to that. Um, but yeah, I'm expecting. 
the LPs will not take as many... This LP will not take as many episodes as it did for me to do all three of the games blind, obviously. It took, like, almost 200 episodes there. Um, so if I was doing Metroid Prime Trilogy blind, it would have been, like, around 200 episodes. But uh, I estimate it probably won't even be half of that with my me now being experienced at all three of these games, but we'll see. Just have to see. If it is less than half of that, I think that'd be good, actually. But I don't think it will be. Oh, crap. Ugh. I guess I can't cheat cheat the game like that. I have to actually be in the room, not be hiding like a sissy. <laughs> Samus is braver than that. We all know that. So, she's not one to just hide like that. Oh. Get in there. Thank you. Oh, here we go. Missiles, missiles. Use your missiles like you promised to. There you go. Pretty much about the power of a charge beam, essentially. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, you can use a charge beam to actually suck in power-ups up here. So that's pretty cool. Or not. Power-ups with pickups. But there will be power-ups. Looking forward to seeing those. This will unlock the door ahead of us here. Um, we're up to 16 minutes. Here. Yeah, yeah, I got plenty of time. Okay, so we'll... Oh, okay, so this is our very first save station. You have to go to one of these in order to save your game, and also they fully replenish your energy too, so that's helpful. So, yes, very important. Very, very important. That's why the game labels them as S's on the map, so you know where they are. But, uh, I pretty much memorized where all the save stations are in this game anyway, so, whatever. Okay, so, we're going to... Here's our ball power to open this door here. And, we're going to step inside. Ooh, this looks very ominous. What could it possibly mean? All that orange hue. Big room, circular like this. Yeah, it couldn't possibly mean anything. Not like it's our first boss or something. Okay, here it is, our first boss of the trilogy. This is the Parasite Queen. The most pathetically easy boss in ever existence. Okay, well, first of all, you always gotta scan it. Anytime you can a boss, you pretty much it's the only chance to scan it. Okay, Parasite Queen, Parasite Female, genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in this creature's mouth. Use your auto-targeting to acquire this new target. Scans indicate the presence of, quote, Mugen, origins unknown creature, exhibits the ability to fire weapon-grade blasts of energy from its mouth. A trait not present in the standard Parasite genome. It appears the Parasites have begun a bioengineering program with uh, considerable results. Yeah, you're telling me. So we're just going to spam this at it. Really impressive, though, is if I can beat this boss without taking any hits. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to... What I usually do is, uh, tap the A button and the down on the control pad at the same time. So it'll allow you to, like, rapidly fire missiles and whatnot. What, that's it? What? I knew the boss was super easy, but I didn't expect the energy to go down that fast. And why is it still shooting... Blast out of its face. What the hell? Our first bug only on the first episode. And also our first evacuation sequence, too. Alright, so now we have our escape sequence, which is a staple of the Metroid series. And it comes up at various times in these three games as well. Alright, so we're gonna take an elevator up here. So basically, we're gonna be taking sort of a detour to the. Uh, front of the frigate. So this actually covers a different area that we haven't gone through yet. Music is really cool, but, uh, actually, that's another thing I should talk about. I freaking love the music in all three of these games. Uh, I cannot, I cannot stress that enough, but, uh, I will point out my favorite songs as we get to them. I got something weird going on here. Another parasite queen, like a yeah, like another one of the parasite uh, enemies. Oh. Okay, so these pirates do take a little more, a few more hits. Are they scannable though? Probably not. No, I didn't think so. Okay, not yet. Not until much later. We'll see them again. Don't you worry about that. I know that you really, really want to see pirates. Like you really love them, but uh, don't worry. We will see them again. Uh, so I'm just gonna finish this escape sequence, and then I'm going to uh, end off the episode here. Um, episodes will typically be 20 minutes. Uh, I'm just gonna make an exception here since I'm in the middle of an escape sequence. I don't wanna... never wanna stop in the middle of an escape sequence, that's for sure. So this episode will probably be like 25 minutes or so. 
Oh, but there's a lot to go, so who knows, maybe 25. Well, maybe 30 more, like I said. Yeah, more Ball is a good way to get around quickly. Definitely want to take advantage of it. I mean, like, you want to use it as much as possible. I mean, like, it's not like you're going to lose it anytime soon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you want to definitely use it whenever you can to gain some speed. Oh, yeah, also, when you're in Morph Ball mode, you can use the A button to drop Morph Ball bombs. But, uh, they really don't serve any purpose this early on, so I'm not going to worry about that. I mean, I guess you could use them to, like, uh, ward off some of these uh, parasites that go after you in the these, uh, circular rooms. By the way, there's going to be a lot of hallways like this. Uh, so the way this game loads rooms is that it, loads, it always has two rooms loaded at once. And it uses long hallways like this as to give itself time to load the next room, essentially. That's the whole point, purpose of these, uh, these long hallways. And there's a lot of them in between big rooms, essentially. And that's how it works. Okay, so right here we got this thing we got to to the end of the hallway here, but it's pretty easy. There we go. Yeah, if you wait too long, the thing's gonna, like, push you, like, way back to the back of that hallway, so... Well, not hallway, but, like, to the end of that, uh... Shaft. Yeah, I'm gonna call it Shaft. <laughs> okay. What do we got? What do we got? I know you! We met at Arby's at one time. Yeah, you had the, uh, you had the chicken strips and I had the... That's right. It was the roast beef sandwich, that's right! Okay, seriously do. Uh, so this is the grapple beam. Uh, basically hold the Z button whenever you have you encounter grapple moments. Oh, here we go. Haha. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Get out of here. We don't have much time. We've only got like, what, eight minutes or so? <laughs> oh no! It was the turret. It got revenge on me. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Very soon malfunction. Warp ball malfunction. Missile malfunction. Charge beam malfunction. Grapple beam malfunction. Penis malfunction. What? Okay, so yes, we are reduced down to just a normal, regular suit. We can't do anything except pea shoot. That's literally it. Yeah, lovely. I think I wait for this room to pressurize here. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't really do anything. We can't morph ball, no nothing. Just gotta just like walk our way out here. Oh. 320. That's close enough to 8 minutes, right? Yeah. I didn't overestimate or anything. Wait! Stop! I just want to know where the nearest Taco Bell is! Maybe he just wants me to follow along. Just don't expect me to pay for the gas! Tracking on enemy target has been lost. Ground base recon required. Begin landing sequence. <gasps> I know this place. It's, it's, it's Western Washington. Yeah, I used to live here. Oh my God. Just the rain and everything. Well, definitely not during the summers these days. Here it is, Talon Overworld. And here it is, the end of the episode. Yes, 25 minutes, okay. Yeah, most episodes will be 20 minutes, uh, because I, I want to keep, I don't want to keep these videos for too long, because I'm doing these at 1080p, 60fps, unlike the original LP, so, yeah, with the upgrade, up in, uh, yeah, with the upgraded, uh, equipment I now have, I can record, a uh, much higher quality now, but, uh, yeah, so I keep the file sizes, uh, from being too high, 
and uh, also um, my sound re my voice recorder that I'm using it it has issues if I record over 20 minutes anyway so I figured 20 minutes is a good amount of time I don't, I don't want to expect people to you know put have so much free time in their day or or even be willing to to listen to me for half an hour or however long like 50 minutes or so so I figured 20 minutes is the perfect amount of time and thank you goodbye